Morgan here for Onefinity, and today we're going to learn how to do a two-sided 3D carve on your CNC. And what better way to demonstrate that than by carving a wooden spoon? For whatever reason, wooden spoons and other kitchen utensils like that are really popular to do on the CNC. I don't know why, but people like them, so let's do that. And to cut one on the CNC is actually a little tricky. Not hard, just a few steps you might not think about unless you've done a project like this before. I went into it with an unwarranted sense of confidence. Figured I'd just intuitively understand the basics of how something like this is done, and just bang it out in one shot, without referencing any of the available resources. I didn't want to spend an hour watching a video to show me the correct way to do it, and in doing so, I wasted some time and ruined some material. Here's my first attempt without any guidance on some solid cherry. My toolpaths were all wrong, and I didn't adequately secure my material with the wasteboard, so even if I had toolpathed it correctly, it would have been a bust. So just a reminder, take extra care in securing your material before you begin machining operation. Anyway, I pulled this thing off the machine, and I realized I was out of my depth, and decided to do a test run on some scrap plywood. I made what I thought were the necessary adjustments to the toolpath, again without referencing the plethora of available resources, like an idiot, and gave it another shot. Y'all want to see what an improperly toolpath spoon carved out of cheap plywood looks like? Hideous. And the plywood was so bad it didn't even give me a good idea of whether or not it would actually look good if properly toolpathed on a solid piece of wood. So if you're going to test something on plywood, use void free at least. And now with two failed attempts under my belt, I decided to sit down and take the time to follow one of Vectric's tutorial videos. I'll put a link to that video in the description for you. And speaking of Vetric, the car version 12 is out now. I toolpath this in version 12, so it looks a little different from the video I referenced, but it's pretty close. All right, first let's take a look at the design. At this point, I reduced my model down to just one spoon rather than two different types. I'd wasted enough material and just wanted to get the thing done. I opened up Vetric, created a new project, and set my material dimensions. This is gonna be a two-sided carve, so make sure that's selected, and we'll set our XY datum to the bottom left corner. Then I imported my 3D model by clicking File, Import, 3D Model. I had to center the model and rotate it to fit how I'll have my material oriented on the wasteboard. Once the model is imported, it'll be centered relative to the Z axis, meaning it'll just be cut out of the center of the thickness. But because my model is curved, part of it sits below the modeling plane and won't be cut because it's below that line. That's where I messed up on my first attempts. I thought I could just raise the model up to the top of the material and compensate for the same amount on the other side. That was incorrect, and I'm done. To cut beyond the modeling plane, which for all intents and purposes is just the middle of the material, and machine the top part of the spoon in its entirety, I just have to specify an overcut measurement. That means I'm just telling the machine how far to cut past the center of the material's thickness. Just type in the value you need, and the preview will update automatically. If the value you enter doesn't cut as deep as you need it to, just re-enter higher and higher values until you can see the entire top side will be cut. Because this thing is basically floating in space, we'll need to add some tabs to keep it secure throughout the machining process. To do that, just find your way over to the clip art tab in the software, and then locate the tabs tab, tabception. I used a quarter inch diameter tab just because I'm overly cautious. This will place a mechanical bridge onto your model, connecting it to the waste material around it to stabilize it throughout the machining process. Those will need to be cut off later, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The software automatically places the tabs with the center of the radius flush with the modeling plane. So I had to move them around to add tabs to the parts of the spoon that crossed the modeling plane so that the tab wouldn't get cut off during the carve. That would kind of defeat the purpose. Then we'll create a roughing toolpath to remove most of the waste here before coming back in with a finishing toolpath. With your model selected, click on toolpaths and select a roughing toolpath. I used a quarter inch spiral in mill for my roughing toolpath. I have it set to a cut depth of 0.0625, that's a sixteenth of an inch per pass, at 200 inches per minute. When you start putting together your toolpath, you'll see a section there called Machining Limit Boundary. This is where you decide how much of the material you want to cut to end up with your finished model. You don't want to select Material Boundary because that would cut away everything around the model. Then you'd have a heck of a time keeping it flat and securing it to the wasteboard when you flip it over. So we're going to choose Selected Level, and in the drop-down menu, the level we want is Model. Okay, let's go ahead and preview that. Cool. You can see that it cut the entire top side of the spoon and preserved the tabs. It's ugly, but again, roughing toolpath. We're just clearing out material here. Then we'll create a 3D finishing toolpath for the same side. There isn't a lot of detail on this model, so I went with a quarter inch ball nose bit. Again, cutting a sixteenth of an inch per pass with an 8% step over, 200 inches per minute. 
Again, we'll set the machining boundary limit to the selected level, which will be model, give it a name, and preview it. And there we go. That looks real nice. Now that we have the top all cut out, let's do the same thing for the bottom. So hit this button here at the top to toggle between top view and bottom view. And now we're looking at the bottom. Let's create another 3D roughing tool path using the same bit and all the same settings we used on the top. Preview, and we'll see the roughing tool path has done its job. Then another 3D finishing tool path, preview, and would you look at that, it's a spoon. After all your previews have calculated, you can revolve your part around to see exactly what your part will look like and identify any adjustments that need to be made, if any. Now we have all our tool paths, save them to a thumb drive and bring it on over to your machine. I'm doing this on my Elite Series Woodworker, but this can be done on any Onefinity machine. First, I'm gonna secure my material to the wasteboard. You're gonna to wanna to take extra care with how you position the material on the wasteboard because this is a two-sided carve. When you flip the material over, that XY datum cannot move. Otherwise, the top and the bottom won't line up and it'll end up looking in the biz call funky. The best way to do that is with some kind of mechanical stops. On my wasteboard, I have half inch diameter holes in a grid that was cut by the machine. So I know that all the holes are perfectly in line with the X and Y axes. In those holes sit half inch diameter dowels that can be positioned anywhere I need them depending on the size of the project. When I flip my material over, I just bump the edges up to the same dowels and my work origin will remain consistent. I used CA glue and painter's tape, and just to be extra safe, used a little bit of hot glue as well. That kept my material nice and sturdy on the wasteboard. Then I just used my touch probe to get an accurate work origin and ran all my tool paths, starting with the roughing tool path on the top side. Then the finishing tool path on the top. Flipped it over, secured it to the wasteboard again, then ran the roughing tool path on the bottom. Then the bottom finishing tool path. And when I pulled it off the wasteboard, it was exactly as expected. The top and bottom lined up perfectly and it was held in place by tabs. So I used an oscillating multi-tool to separate it from the waste. Then I had to use files, chisels, and sandpaper to get rid of any trace of those tabs. Project complete. And if I'm being totally honest, I still don't really understand why people do these. I mean, wooden spoons are like a dollar. Anyway, I made a spoon to demonstrate the process, but it can be used for lots of stuff. Spoons, forks, figurines, forkerines, ladles, trophies, other kitchen utensils, kitchen trophies, and trophy spoons. And all jokes aside, I do plan to cut a guitar neck out using this method in the near future, so that'll be useful. So that's that, a two-sided 3D carve. As always, I hope you found this helpful, and if you don't want to shell out a whole dollar for a wooden spoon, glad I could be of service. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment, all that stuff, and stay tuned. Got lots more fun projects coming in hot. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good.